Well, good morning, fellow DIY friends. This is DIY Dave. We are back at it again. We're going to do something a little different today. Uh, most cases, if you uh, need to rotate the tires on your vehicle, you can take it to the place where you uh, bought the tires and had them installed. They give you some sort of policy where they will do lifetime uh, rotations for free or for a token amount of money. Uh, but if you buy a used car, you don't have that prior relationship with the garage, and if you haven't bought new tires for them, uh, you either are looking at going to a garage and having them uh, charge you $25, $30, $40, $50, $50, whatever they might want to charge you to uh, put the car on a lift and rotate them for you, or you can try doing it yourself. And that's what we're going to do today on this uh, Lexus CS350. This is a 2015 model, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to... Uh, so just swap front to back that's according to the manufacturer specifications you just do a front to back wheel swap actually we're one maintenance interval behind the regular schedule the maintenance manual suggests that you should do a tire rotation on this vehicle every 5,000 miles and I just finished the second oil change we did the first oil change in the video back uh, last summer uh, so what we're going to do uh, there are a couple of different ways that people have approached doing these kinds of DIY tire rotations uh, one of them involves jacking up one side of the car and then doing a swap uh, and then rolling over to the other side, jacking up that side and doing the swap. That's okay except for the fact that uh, the, the jack points around that area uh, are typically just individual reinforcements and I'll show you here in just a minute. Those are reinforcements intended for the little scissors lift, the little temporary emergency scissor jack that comes with most vehicles and uh, if that's bent or uh, misaligned then it might be a problem and also I don't know that they were really intended to lift both sides the front and the back both ends of the car at the same time so I'm going to do this a little bit differently what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my regular floor jack jack up the front and then we're and put it on jack stands and then we're going to jack up the back and we're only going to lift it up just enough to clear the ground so we can get the wheels off and in effect, we'll have the whole car elevated, albeit a little bit, just enough to get the car off. Now we're gonna be very careful because uh, most of the weight in a front wheel drive vehicle is very much scooted forward. So when you have the weight on jack stands, a little bit of a shift in weight, uh, especially with all four points uh, suspended, could make the car susceptible to a little bit of a shove or a little bit of a twist or a turn, and it might pivot off the, jacks, off the jack stands. Granted, a good set of jack stand that's not likely, but it's at least possible, so it means we exercise caution. I've seen in some some videos and some descriptions and some forms is that is that you can take advantage of the jack points that are welded into the frame. Well, uh, the little pinch points. Well, unfortunately, in this car, somebody, uh, obviously the prior owner or the prior lessee that was actually a leased vehicle. Uh, apparently tried to jack the car up on those pinch points and they used a flat jack didn't use the adapter correctly and they bent the pinch point they built they bent that point which means we've got a little bit of frame over here that we could uh, hit if I had an adapter but the plate of my floor jack is is so wide that I would I think uh, risk squashing those pinch welds even further and I really don't want to do that uh, it might be safe. It might might be people read there saying, "Yeah, you can do it. Don't sweat it." Uh, I'm just not going to take the chance. Yeah. Now the corresponding pinch weld back here is in perfect shape on the rear. It's no problem. We could probably use that uh, if I had an adapter on my on my uh, on my jack or a jack pad for that. But I don't. So um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to. Uh, jack up the front then jack up the rear have the car suspended both sides we'll use jack stands and get this thing taken care of first thing i'm going to do is going to set the parking brake Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up the car using the center designated uh, jack lift point in the, in the center of the rail, the center of the cross rail underneath the car. Now notice, I'm going to try to get a good picture here of the plate of the jack 
the lift plate is directly under that small uh, bubble on the center of the frame rail. That's the designated lift point. So we're going to lift that guy up right on that point. Uh, first, one thing I omitted, we're going to chalk the back wheels. Wheels chalked. So now with the wheels chalked and the and the uh, jack properly aligned underneath the center of the car, we're going to go ahead and lift this the front of the wheel, uh, front of the car, uh, just enough to get it off the ground. Before we actually lift it, though, we're going to grab our impact and we're going to loosen the lug nuts on all the wheels. Okay. Uh, first of all, we're going to do, we're going to loosen the lug nuts. We're not going to take them completely off. We want to loosen them so we have advantage of the car being on the ground. Now, this is where the first time I get a chance to use my uh, impact driver that I got for Christmas. This should make the process of taking off lug nuts and tight bolts a lot simpler. And if you've seen some of the other videos where I struggle with that, I think this is going to be a really handy tool. So uh, let's go ahead and get the lug nuts spun off. We'll just show this one and repeat it for the other four wheels. Okay, so now we're just going to, so now we're just going to raise the car up just enough to get the wheels off the ground. We're gonna make sure our jack is tight. Make sure we're going up. Make sure we're lined up properly. the ground off the ground okay now jack stands I'm gonna have to jack these up a little bit higher to admit the minimum clearance for these jack stands There. Uh, these jack stands that I have, I actually inherited from my uncle. He was a brilliant uh, mind who could fix anything. He loved to work on cars, uh, anything he could fix. And when he passed away, my aunt gave me his jacks and that four jack and these jack stands. And I couldn't find any weight rating on these. He'd had them for years. I finally did a little research online. Uh, these are rated at uh, one and a half tons each, 3,000 pounds. So these should be more than adequate to uh, hold the front end of the car and then we'll carefully go underneath the back side and jack it up. On the jack stands and we are nice and secure. Now we'll go repeat. Now since I'm going to back up, since I'm going to jack up the, uh, since I'm going to jack up the back end now, I want to chalk the front wheels to prevent them from rolling. Now I'm going to grab a piece of scrap wood, to elevate this guy just a little bit. Yeah. I like that better.
there. So, we've chopped the front wheels going forward because we're now jacking up the rear end. That's how I jacked up, stock, uh, chalked up that wheel. This is how I chalked up this wheel. So now we're gonna take the jack and now we're gonna go to the back of the car and it's a little bit more difficult than the, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to spot than the, than the front lift point. And in fact, I'm hoping, I'm not entirely sure this jack will be able to access it quite frankly, but we're gonna try. And if you're watching this video, you could probably assume that I was able to do it or else there wouldn't be any point to the video now, would there? <laughs> now this is where the visibility gets really, really tricky. The jack point on this side of the car, matter of fact, the jack point on the back of the car Okay, the jack point in the uh, back end of the car here is that location just to the left of that uh, uh, exhaust pipe where it hangs down a little abutment on the rear frame rail. That is, now if this were a rear wheel drive vehicle, that would probably be where the differential was located. This is a front wheel drive, so there's no differential, but that's the equivalent bump. And I, I don't have any way of pointing to it to show it to you, but that's where we've got to reach with our jack and where we got to lift up. Uh, I don't know if this would apply comparably to a prior year Lexus or Avalon, which I believe shares the frame for this vehicle, but there's going to be something comparable in most front wheel drive vehicles. There'll be a designated jack point and you'd need to look in your owner's manual uh, to find out where those designated jack points are. I'm going to hopefully get that jack where you can see it and then I can jack it up. Yep, I think I'm almost there. Yep, we're on the right spot. So we just want to get it up a little bit higher. Okay, I couldn't find a, a place that I was comfortable with in behind the suspension here, a flat piece of the frame. So what I've done is I've leveraged the information that I have about where this pinch weld exists and to know that it's reinforced on either side to sustain the scissor jack. So I'm taking this jack stand, which is my least favorite jack stand that I don't really like to use because it's obviously plastic but it is good enough for these purposes because I'm not going to be getting under the car. Uh, and I don't plan to have it up any longer than I need to just get the wheels off and rotate it. So we're going to go put this under the uh, same wheel on the other side.
Okay, so now we have jack stands on both sides here. We now have jack stands there. We have the other jack stand on that side. So now we have the car braced. So let's just swap out the wheels. Now one thing to keep in mind, they're pretty nice wheels on this, on this car. So when I take these wheels off and I pull the wheel off, I want to be sure not to let the thing fall flat or and risk scratching these wheels. Wheel is off. And with the wheel off, this is as good a time as any to take a look at the uh, rotors on the back here. These don't do as much work as the front rotors on any front wheel drive vehicle, but it's a good time to look at it. These rotors are in great shape. They're smooth. The pads look like they're uh, in great shape. They look, in fact, they look practically new. Don't know if you can quite see that, but this is a good time to take a look in the back of the car. You don't look at this side very much. Everything looks good and clean, no leaks. Uh, the car has been in fantastic shape. We've had her about a year now, and I, I've just, I've really loved it. I, it's just it's a super, super vehicle. So we can go ahead and get the rest of this side done. Again, we'll do the same thing here. We'll inspect the the rotors and the pads and again they look fantastic these look uh, understand I put about 10,000 miles in this car since I bought it and uh, these rotors and pads still look uh, almost brand new they're they're gonna go a long time before they need replacement so we can go ahead and rotate these tires and get this project done I'm only going to put these lugs on hand tight and we'll tighten them when we get them on the ground. I will point out that whoever put these wheels on the last time grossly over torqued them. The torque spec for these lug nuts is 76 foot pounds. And I had to use a concentrated application of the highest setting on my impact to get them off. There's no reason to, tuck, to, to torque them on that tight. All that does is risk ruining the bolts, maybe even spoiling a wheel. There's just no reason to do that. Torque them exactly to factory specs, but as close as you can get reasonably to factory specs. But you don't have to go crazy, go uh, all gorilla. And these particular uh, wheels do not have locks. Okay. We got them hand tight. And that completes this side, short of putting them on the ground and tightening them.
last step for the wheels is we're going to torque them to the proper spec, which is 76 foot-pounds. So we will take our trusty torque wrench and we will adjust it to 76 pounds, which is right there. We will tighten the bolt. And just as a reminder, if you hadn't seen it before, when you tighten these bolts, you want to go in a star pattern. You, you either can think of it as starting here and then skipping this bolt going here, skipping this bolt and going here, and then eventually you get everything to a uniform torque. Or you can think of it like you're going in a star. That's how I learned it was a star pattern, but either way it works. And the whole point here is that you don't want to over torque these, you want to distribute the torque evenly so the bolts are evenly pressured against the wheel. And notice that I'm having to turn the wrench quite a bit. Which shows that I did not torque them too much when I put on the original impact. Yeah, that's done. And we'll just repeat that process on all four sides. Okay, now we have completed uh, torquing all the lug nuts to 76 foot-pounds. We're good and tight all the way around up to spec. The last thing that we need to do is to tell the computer to reset itself as far as the TPMS sensors are concerned. Now, let's go in here and we'll take a look at this. Underneath the uh, knee jack, knee brace, whatever they call it, there is a TPMS reset button. Very hard to see, it's right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the car uh, on and then we're gonna hit that reset button and hold it in for three seconds. We'll then wait for the uh, TPMS warning light to flash three times and when it goes off, it will say, good, I'm done. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that this is not a relearn. If we were replacing a sensor, if we had damaged a wheel or damaged a sensor or a sensor had gone bad and we had to put in a new TPMS sensor, we would have to go through a different procedure that that set button doesn't handle. That would be a relearn. What that set button does is that it says, I have four unique codes for four unique TPMS sensors stored in memory. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna pull to make sure I can see them. It will then see that they're available, it'll talk to them after a period of time, and it will say, great, we're done, we're all set, we're good to go. If you had to change sensors, each sensor has its own unique code, and that set button wouldn't get the job done. You've gotta unlock the ECU, the engine control unit, to allow it to change the codes for the TPMS sensors. That's usually something you have to accomplish with a scan tool or with the Toyota TechStream software. I have an AP200 by Autel, a little OBD Bluetooth scanner that has TPMS functionality. If I had to do that, I believe that tool would do it, but I don't need that for this particular case. So let's go ahead and do the reset. So, We're gonna go ahead and start the car. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach down here. Oh, and it's also important to understand that you should only do this set procedure when the tires are cold, not driven for a, at least a couple of hours because it will take this now as the reference pressure for those sensors. So I've got my finger on the button that I showed in the last frame. So I'm now going to press and hold it for three seconds. One, two, 
three. There's the tire light blinks once, twice, three times, goes out, and we're done. And now it's a matter of just driving the car and it will uh, accept the signals from the wheel wells and it'll be done. If there's a late, if that light comes back on later, there may be a problem, but we're gonna assume that this is gonna be good to go and this tire rotation procedure is completed. Uh, I think that's gonna be it. Understand that I realize not many people have to do their own tire rotations, but if you do buy a used car, you don't have a prior relationship with your uh, with a tire sales uh, company or Sam's Club or wherever you get your tires, if you don't have new tires on your car and you don't think you can get someone to do it for you inexpensively, you can do it on your own. If you've got a floor jack and some jack stands, understand where the proper lift points are, understand where to put the jack stands so you're safe, understand where the factory specs are for the proper torque, you can do the rotation yourself. Know the right direction, know the right steps, you can do it yourself. Uh, I tell you what, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We're putting these videos out as often as we get the chance. I've got a couple of others uh, planned and in the pipe. In fact, I'm gonna be working on some more a little bit later. Uh, lots of fun stuff coming up. We continue to have slow, steady growth in our uh, subscriber count. We thank for all of our new subscribers that you take the time out of your day to watch our videos. We hope you enjoy them. Again, not a mechanic, just a DIYer who's willing to learn a little bit. And hopefully I can share that information with other folks like you. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye for now. This video was Boomer approved. <laughs>